What's going on guys? This is Joey Young coming after you another weekly update on the fish tanks. I got a lot of things done in the fish room this week so um, that's why I'm doing a solo video to try to keep you guys updated on the current project. So last week, um, rack number one, or I'm going to call it the blue rack since, you know, the color theme there, um, it was pretty much uh, all done in terms of the, all the glue and the pipes, right? So this week, what I did was I did a test run on the system to make sure all the pipes were glued correctly. There's no leaks, there's no issues, and just really running the pump and running, you know, all these um, connections that I had in the system to make sure it works correctly. So right off the bat, of course, there were leaks. Um, there were really minor leaks, but, you know, there were leaks. So the first couple leaks were off of the actual overflow box. The actual nut um, to the overflow box wasn't tight enough. And actually, I forgot to put um, the plumber's tape on the threadings uh, for a couple of them. So it, it leaked between the actual threads of that. So with just a quick plumber's tape, I was able to fix it really fast. The other couple of leaks were totally my fault. So what I did was I would basically cut all the pipes and kind of like put them together before gluing and kind of set them there. So what I did was I glued like the top half of everything and I left like a couple of like pieces where I wasn't really sure of like the length to the actual tank and I left those not glued and so what I did was when I ran it you know of course since they weren't glued they had some leaks on those sections so that actually was an easy fix and all I did was glue them and it worked so what I did was I ran the system for about three days and uh, to make sure that there was no other leaks and there was no other leaks guys the first additions on the actual system setup right now it actually runs really great. Um, I actually had initial concerns on the overflow box actually being able to handle, um, I guess, the load just in case if like one side gets clogged, you know, to see how it would drain and, on and whatnot. Um, for the most part, if I turn the ball valve on one side and only let water flow on, like I guess, say, you know, one side of the tank, uh, it actually can handle it pretty well. Um, it does fill up a little bit, but, you know, it does cap off and, you know, from there, um, get trained normally. The actual pump, the Vector L1 pump, I think was a little bit of an overkill uh, for the system to be honest. It is a beast. Like literally I have this set currently at like only three ticks or like three little dots or four dots, I forget what it was, and oof, it drains water like a beast. Uh, most likely I'll probably have to fine tune it, tweak it a little bit to see where I want to run it at. But yeah, right now that pump is a monster. Uh, it's a great pump so far. After running it for a couple days, um, I went ahead and I actually drained the tank. Uh, the reason why I'm draining the tank is because I had a bunch of just residue and a bunch of just junk collecting in the tank since it was just sitting in the garage stagnant for a little bit until I actually got stuff running. When I actually got stuff running, just debris and stuff got kicked around. But anyways, the main purpose is I had to drain it, one, because I needed to fill the whole tank set up with RO water. I basically just you know, did a test fill with just tap water, but you know, this is gonna be a salt water setup, um, and I needed to drain it to fill up with actually proper water. The other thing was I wanted to clean up all the residue that I was collecting on the tank, and while it's dried or semi, you know, drained completely, I wanted to add the substrate so that it just doesn't fly everywhere, and it's a little bit easier to work with. And lastly, the other thing that I wanted to do was test the actual drain system that my dad and I built a couple weeks back on the floor to make sure that that didn't leak as well and testing it it worked awesome so right now I don't have it fully plumbed um, to the way I want it because I'm still trying to debate on where the quarantine plumb is going to be so what I did was I basically just connected some pieces at the end of the pipe just so that I can run off into the lawn without any glue or anything just kind of just a hard fit for now and so I can kind of finalize where I want it to, to go. So that system worked really well. The only minor modification what I did was on the ends, I kind of stacked it on an angle a little bit high um, so that I can kind of drain downwards, you know, with a slope. Same thing with the um, end close to the wall. I kind of angled that a little bit so it can actually drain out of the garage. So really the only thing I need to do with this blue rack system is fill it up with RODI water and that's going to take forever. So um, I didn't get a chance to fill it up today. I'm probably going to start that fill tomorrow. It's probably going to take all day because this is probably 220, 30 gallons of our whole water I need to make straight. And uh, 
yeah, that's going to take some time, guys. After the water is filled, I can start cycling the tank, actually. And um, the other thing that I want to do uh, before I actually add in the RLDI water is put the substrate in, obviously. But I want to set up the lighting. I have all the lighting um, set aside, so I want to probably hook those up so that it's all locked in place. Um, just in case, you know, if I fill the water and I'm sitting with it and it just doesn't fall into the water because that could happen as well, right? Blue rack, pretty much, um, I'll probably, you know, do those, you know, throughout the week and next week's video, you'll probably see an update on that. So moving on to rack number two. So rack number two, I'm going to call it the green rack, um, just because color code again, guys. Um, pretty much I had to do the exact same setup uh, as last week for this rack and I actually got all of the plumbing done for this. Everything's glue, everything's cut, everything's in place. But a couple of things um, happened with this uh, install or build while I was working on it. One, one of the overflow boxes that I bought um, was the older model um, of the eShops. So the eShops has, the newer model has more holes, so it actually flows or overflows a lot faster versus the older model, only it was a little bit bigger, but it has less holes, I guess. And that one didn't, couldn't keep up as fast, I guess. So what I did was I just, you know, pretty much um, ordered another one. I'm probably going to, you know, swap this one or sell it back. Uh, the other issue is uh, I couldn't get a second pump for the system. For whatever reason, uh, apparently everybody wanted the uh, Vector L1 pumps. And it's just sold out everywhere. Like, it's not even online at all. So I'm going to wait until that comes back in stock and order the last pump for the actual tank. So really, this tank is pre-plumb, preset for everything except for one overflow box and then the pump. Only thing I could do on this setup is um, do a water test, a water test on the tanks because I didn't get a chance to do a water test in the tanks initially. So as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just filling up the tanks. Pretty much it's a waiting game right now. I'm gonna you know let this sit a couple days and make sure there's no leaks in here. I'm probably gonna do a water test on the actual overflow boxes before I actually hook them up to make sure that the actual bulkhead doesn't leak like last, like the other rack, the blue rack. Um, I actually threaded them and everything already just to make sure. And for the green rack, pretty much the same thing. Um, once I do the test run, I'm going to drain it, uh, add the substrate in, add the lighting, and then refill it up and then cycle the tank. So the green rack, I haven't ordered any of the LEDs for this one because of just the budget wise. Um, I wanted to do the blue rack first and then the green rack was kind of second priority as, you know, as funding comes in, I guess. Um, it, it is really expensive for the LEDs, so um, I have to stagger them um, in terms of purchases. Uh, so probably I, what I'll do for the green rack is I'll probably, I order, already ordered one LED, but I, I need two LEDs per tank. So yeah, a lot of money in LEDs, so I'm probably have to stagger it um, and just probably buy them, you know, and then once I get them, I'll probably just, you know, set up one tank, next one, set up the next tank as I get the lights in. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update on the fish room. Um, there's a lot more content on the fish room coming up in the near future. Also, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do. And if you guys want notification on either the fish room build or any of the other minor fish tanks, make sure you hit the notification button, the little bell down in the bottom there. And it will notify you once I upload videos. And you can check them out. So, until next time guys, peace.